<laughs> Dr. Del C. Allison, my friend Paulagia, has one final question. And he says, with Jesus' triumphal entry, the authors of Mark and Luke speak of a single donkey, but Matthew 21 adds a second donkey. Some say the author of Matthew got confused by the wording of the Old Testament passage, parallelism there, and so invented the second donkey. Is that, is that a reasonable conclusion? And I'll follow it up to say, I know one apologist who wants to argue that... <laughs> It, Jesus didn't ride on both donkeys, but rather it was the, what do you call the saddle or the, the, the cloth that's on both of the cloths are on one donkey. So in effect, he sat on both of the cloths. He's trying to reconcile this contradiction and says, Okay, I, I'm not interested in those sorts of artificial harmonizations. I think all that ended a uh, long, long time ago. And that if you just set the gospels beside each other, you know that they are rewriting things, they're adding things. Uh, and sometimes they're just changing things. So in this case, um, why does Matthew turn one donkey into two donkeys? Uh, in a book I wrote a uh, long time ago now, uh, I said maybe it has something to do with his Moses typology. And I think it's Acts 4. Uh, anyway, there's a passage in, in, in uh, I mean, Exodus 4. Uh, I think there's a, a passage in Exodus where Moses writes... Uh, is associated with donkeys, plural, right, rather than, than one. I think he, he takes his donkeys back to Egypt with his family. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not recalling exactly the text, but I think it's Exodus 4. Anyway, I said, well, maybe, because Matthew does have a, a very rich, robust Moses typology. He's really into parallels between Jesus and Moses. The usual answer is that he's reading Zechariah, and you can read the Hebrew text as though you know, you have two donkeys. Now, what's often said after that is, well, you know, he couldn't have been a, a, a learned Jew or a rabbi because he's misunderstanding Hebrew parallelism. But you can, there are a couple of passages in the rabbis where they see two donkeys there. So if they see two donkeys, Matthew can see two donkeys. It has uh, nothing to say about his, Good point, um, his, his ethnic background and, and whether or not he could understand Hebrew, and if you if you again know the rabbis, they they love these sorts of plays. They they look at tiny little details and blow them up and invent history, and uh, I I have no problem with thinking. Yeah, Matthew was looking at the passage in Zechariah and saying, "Oh, I can find two donkeys there." Now the question after that is, how did he imagine this thing to work? Was he a trick writer? You know, he had one leg on each, <laughs> you know, donkey riding in. I don't think so. Um, I, it's really hard to get a picture uh, right. of, of this. So whether Matthew gave it any thought other than that, yeah, I've got a, I've got a scripture here in mind and I can do this. Yeah. I, I, I have no he idea. He may not even been thinking like, how would this practically work? He's just going based off the scripture. Maybe well, maybe. I, 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 maybe. So, so here's the point where you have to, you have to pay some attention to the, you know, the new criticism, the new, um, I don't know what the author was thinking at this point. Right. Okay. I think I can see, the the motive behind it, but then how the evangelist um, thought of it, I don't know. By the way, I guess I should add, given given the modern world, that I do use he with reference to all the evangelists, and that's because one, that's the tradition, and two, it's my judgment that they were all written by men. I don't yeah. think any of them were written by women. Yeah, I think so as, as well. Um, and I, I'd like to just kind of, if I could put you on the uh, front line and, and just have you say it, is this not clearly, if you were trying to literalize and harmonize, a clear contradiction between the other Gospels in this passage? Now, even if you, even if you posit, though, that Matthew is using Moses instead of the Zechariah, let's just say, or whatever, uh -huh. and he thinks multiple donkeys, if that is, but it seems he's referring to the okay, Zechariah. Okay, so if, if I were to make an argument about contradictions, I would go, I would go to other texts. Because um, what harmonists do with this is what they do elsewhere. For example, in um, Mark 5 and then in Matthew 8, you have the story of the Gerasene, well, is it demoniac or demoniacs? So Matthew has two there yeah. and Mark has one. And what the apologists have always said is, well, if you talk about one, that doesn't mean there was another one of there, course, of course. right? But actually, multi Matthew multiplies by two, seems to, not, on several occasions. 
And, um, you know, there's another a place at the end, uh, Blind Bartimaeus in Mark is one and Matthew's got two. So, and there may be another place where Matthew does this. I always wanted to write an article on Matthew multiplying by two and trying to figure out what it is, but I never found any anything to tie it all together. So right. I, do, I don't have an answer. Uh, so I think it's artificial. But if you're talking about contradictions, um, the different order of events w would be one. Or um, I think, uh, I'm not going to get this off the top of my head, but if you look at the story of blind, so-called blind Bartimaeus in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, in one text he's doing this on his way into the city and another on his way out. And... Uh, I, that's just, or you could even go to like post-resurrection meet in Galilee, and another one stay in Jerusalem, right? Isn't well, that that, that that is it is hard to put those those uh, things together. Yeah, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. I just figured I'd ask because when I'm looking at the Matthew text, apology it brings up here is, and you know I wrestled this with myself and listening to the apologists trying to explain. Well, they're just not they're not considering the second one. But when I'm reading it in the Greek or transliterated in English, of course, because I'm not a Greek reader, but my friend who's big into the Greek was like, in the Mark, for example, version in Luke, it's like, it's not referencing two, it's do, it's following the parallelism as a single donkey. It, uh -huh. They're not even thinking, but one can always try to rationalize, well, there was a second one he didn't care about. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think of it this way, and this is simplistic, but I think that the age of harmonization ended in the 19th century. Uh, again, David Friedrich Strauss's Critical Life of, uh, Life of Jesus Critically Examined, uh, he's not only looking at the text trying to find the Old Testament origins of the things, he's arguing against the harmonizers, and he does a fantastic job, and he just rakes them over the coals. And in my mind, that was the end of, that should have been the end of that activity, that is, Strauss was very bright, very observant, and I think he's just right time after time after time. And uh, it's unfortunate that not everyone in the world said, oh yeah, he's right about that. Let's worry about other things. Right. Final thing on this note, just mm -hmm. it brings to the attention of this uh, um, Lydia McCrew and uh, the McGrews that are uh, Christian oh, apologists. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they're they're definitely above, like, in terms of the... the they're smart. Very, yeah. But, I mean, at the same time, I'm not trying to be overly critical. I'm just trying to point out that they have these ideas, what they call... Um, uh, it's like a coincidental... Uh, what are they, it's kind of a harmonization. Okay, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. It, it's, it's something in the vein of... Um, Undesigned coincidence. You talk about Bayesian theory. They're using Bayesian. I know they use statistics. Bayesian. I think they do, definitely are using Bayesian. Uh -huh. But it's also this idea that something undesigned pops up in the scene in another gospel, and it somehow coincidentally helps support the idea oh, that okay. there are contradictions. I don't know if you looked into no, that. No, I'm not familiar with their work on that. Okay, then there'd be no need to really ask <laughs> okay. the question. Yeah, but I'm sure you've heard of them. They they, they oh, yeah. like to kind of harmonize uh, things. Yeah, he actually after my book came out, he actually emailed me and asked me a, a question about something. Interesting. All right, but I did disagree with them about Bayesian calculations uh, at one point. I'm I'm really leery to go that way, uh, and gave my explanations for wh why I don't do a Bayesian analysis with with the material. Thank you, sir.